Hello and welcome to Tactical Insight. This is a new series on the channel where I'm going to be taking you through certain aspects of the game to hopefully give you some tips on improving your play. This first episode is going to focus on Maelstrom of War missions. Now, those of you that read the blog and watch battle reports on the channel will know that Maelstrom is, without a doubt, my favourite way to play the game. I love the tactical challenges that Maelstrom brings up during the battle, and I think that any army can compete in a Maelstrom of War mission if you design your army right, regardless of who your opponent is or if it's a bad matchup for your army. This is because the Maelstrom games are all about playing the cards. If you can focus on scoring the objectives, then you can score more points than your opponent and you can win the game. Uh, in a lot of games I see people treat Maelstrom as an afterthought, normally going after trying to kill the opponent's army or uh, tabling them and not really giving much thought to scoring the cards. As I say, it's one of my favourite ways to play the game, um, but few tournaments tend to use this. Thinking of Maelstrom as more as an afterthought, such as in ETC missions where the combination of kill points and end of game objectives really mean you don't have to focus on the Maelstrom much. There are a few tournaments I've attended that have been Maelstrom only, or have had Maelstrom missions sprinkled in, and I, I really do enjoy these ones. I think of the three pure Maelstrom tournaments that I've attended, I've placed first in two of them and second in one of them over the years. So it's one of my favourite ways to play and I think you can ensure a lot of victory by following some simple rules and by designing your army to take advantage of the Maelstrom missions. So let's take a look at some of the rules that I think will help you out in your Maelstrom games. So my first rule for Maelstrom missions is knowing when to discard your cards. One of the biggest errors that I see a lot of players doing in Maelstrom games is to hold on to a card for too long during, their, uh, during the battle. I've frequently had games where my opponent will draw a card on turn 1 and will still have that card at the end of the game hoping to be able to achieve it. The way I think to achieve victory in Maelstrom games is to cycle through and try and score as many cards as possible. So in a standard Maelstrom game you'll be drawing three cards per turn. You ideally want to be achieving as many as possible, obviously, to win, but you want to try and score at least two a game so that you can then discard the third and to draw a brand new uh, deck each turn. As I say, the more you cycle through your cards, the more you're likely to score and the more you'll rack up the points to win the game. So for example, if I have a card in my hand that I know I'm not going to score this turn and I'm probably not going to score it the next turn, odds are that will be getting discarded at the end of the battle round so that I can potentially draw another card that I've got better odds of scoring. If you have a Maelstrom card in your hand for more than one or two turns, then I think something has gone quite wrong and you should look at what priority you're giving to scoring the cards and which cards you're going to be discarding at the end of each turn. It's a really simple rule, but you'll be amazed how many opponents simply ignore it and hold on to cards for as long as possible to try and, on the off chance, they'll be able to score them. So my second rule for Maelstrom missions is to actually score your cards. Uh, now this may seem obvious, but if you have certain cards in your hand each turn, you want to devote all the resources of your army to trying to achieve those cards. For example, if you have overwhelming firepower and you have to waste the firepower of an entire squad just to take out one more model, in the enemy unit, I wouldn't call that a waste. You want to, even if there's bigger threats on the board, yes, you may damage them or destroy them, but if they don't help you achieve any 
cards scored or any victory points, then you are wasting the resources of your army. So, for example, there are frequently games where I'll go forgo the firepower of a unit in order to advance onto an objective or to advance to the enemy deployment zone to, for example, score behind enemy lines. So these are the sort of tactical decisions you have to think about in Maelstrom games. You know, devote as much firepower as you need in order to destroy enemy units, either to take them off an objective or to score overwhelming firepower or big game hunter, even if you're leaving bigger chunks of the enemy army alive. Now, I find that Maelstrom games play very differently to most Eternal War games and that a lot of the time you can be ignoring the enemy army in order to try and score your own points. Uh, obviously, you can't completely ignore them as you do want to be able to kill units. You can't let your opponent be running around rampantly. But these should sort of be an afterthought to going after what objectives you have. If you have secure objectives, if you have defend objectives, you should focus your army on trying to score those, score the easier ones that don't rely on interacting with your opponent. For example, destroying enemy psychers, destroying enemy units. If you can score points that are only based on the movement of your army and what you're doing, then it's going to be easier for them to score you each time, as opposed to, say, when your opponent has a good round of saving throws or you have a bad round of shooting or close combat. So my second rule is, if you're going to score a card, make sure that you score the card. That means either advancing onto objectives or using screening units to stop your opponent from taking objectives, hiding units behind cover so that you can score a defend objective, or putting a lot of firepower into maybe a weaker enemy unit um, in order to kill them. So for example, if you can put your firepower into a unit of Gretchen to wipe them out, to score no prisoners or overwhelming firepower, they are probably going to be easier to kill than a large unit of Orc Boys, which may be a bigger threat to your army, but you may not have the firepower to completely kill them and score the points. My third drill for Maelstrom War games is remember your stratagems. Uh, New Orders is a generic stratagem that anyone can use. It is pricey at two command points, but this allows you to discard a Maelstrom card you have drawn and draw another. And this can be really effective in Maelstrom games if you have a particularly bad round of cards, allowing you to redraw one and potentially be able to score that round because that's what you want to focus on is scoring the Maelstrom cards as quickly as possible and cycling through as many as possible. It is pricey at 2cp and I know there's probably other stratagems that are going to be useful uh, in your army to use but again this stratagem can be game winning if you use it correctly in order to try and score points. What I would also encourage you to do is look at the mission that you're playing. Frequently, these contain their own unique stratagems, either allowing you to discard excess cards uh, in order to cycle through more, or stop your opponent from scoring some of their cards in a mission, which is very valuable, allowing you to get a bigger score and to keep your opponent's score low. So whatever mission you're playing, be sure to check out the stratagems that are available for that mission, if there are any, as it's something that people frequently overlook, and these can be, again, potentially very powerful and potentially game-winning. So with those simple rules out of the way, let's take a look at how you can build your army to maximise its effectiveness in Maelstrom missions. Now, if you look at the standard deck of 36 cards, you'll notice that 24 out of the 36 are focused on either grabbing objectives or getting into position around the board. So, for example, you have your secure objective cards, you have your defend objective cards, and you have other cards that rely on table positioning such as behind enemy lines, advance, 
mission critical objective, supremacy and domination. So with two thirds of the deck focused on moving about the board and grabbing objectives, it makes sense that in any Maelstrom mission you will want some faster moving elements in your army. So one of the most effective units I find for this in the Space Marine, various Space Marine armies, are bike squads. Uh, the reason I like these is they have, they have some reasonable level of durability. So most are toughness 5 with a 3 up save and 2 wounds. So they can handle a lot of small arms firepower. The big bonus for bikes is that they have a large move value, generally 14 inches for Space Marine bikes, and they have a guaranteed 6 inch advance, giving most bikes a move of 20 inches a ton if they advance. And what's great about this guaranteed advance is that it allows you to know reliably how far each unit will move in the ton. So you don't have to worry about rolling a high advance roll or using a CP reroll to get an objective. So one of the key rules for doing well in Maelstrom of War missions is having some good mobility in the army. This allows you to move out to grab objectives uh, around the board or to get in close to uh, do other objectives such as blood and guts or uh, targeting specific units. This also means that any units that have an ability to deep strike or come in from reserve will also be useful. Um, in a lot of my armies, I will frequently keep a small unit of jump infantry back in order to come in late on turn three or earlier if I draw behind enemy lines, give me a guaranteed point. And it's also nice having a cheap unit to come in and grab line breaker at the end. So frequently I'll run an assault squad or my death watch, that'll be a Vanguard Veteran squad who are just bare bones, no upgrades, and are useful for going after behind enemy lines or for securing line breaker at the end of the game. It also helps to have some good uh, infantry units for holding backfield objectives. So in most missions, you will generally be sitting on two or three objectives in your deployment zone or near your deployment zone. And it's obviously easy to score these. When these come up as secure objectives or defend objectives, these are really good again, uh, for holding backfield units. So good squads like intercessors that have multi-wounds or putting units in cover for a two-up armor save if you're marines. Or another army such as Gene Steel Cults, cheap infantry squads that can sit out a line of sight and sit behind cover um, and score these points for you. It doesn't matter if they do anything because you're the squad's cheap enough that you're not losing a lot if you're not contributing, say, 10 las guns to your army's firepower. So in Maelstrom of War missions, it helps to have a good mix of units, it helps to have some mobility in the army and some backfield presence, which makes sort of generic all-comers lists quite powerful in Maelstrom. I find that a lot of um, gunline armies, do, such as Tau or Astra Militarum, generally don't do well in Maelstrom if they're not prepared to move around the board and go after objectives. Um, if they just sit back and try and shoot the enemy, then that allows you to potentially pin them into the deployment zone or move around and grab the objectives on your own. So it's something to always consider when you know you're going to be playing Maelstrom and building up your army. The other thing you can look at is taking forces that will deny your opponent scoring cards. So if you don't have any psychers, then they can't score uh, Witch Hunter. If you don't have any good vehicles, then it struggles for them to score Big Game Hunter. So depending on your playstyle, you can limit the firepower that your opponent will be putting in at you and limit the opportunities they have to score, allowing forcing them to go after the objectives as well, move around the board, which hopefully with your enhanced mobility will be a bit easier for you to do. 
In many of the new Maelstrom missions, you're allowed to discard six cards from your deck at the beginning of the turn uh, in order to minimise the occurrence of drawing a card that you are unable or impossible to score. Uh, some of the commonly discarded cards you'll see are Advance, so generally you won't be wanting to fully move out of your deployment zone as a lot of the time you'll have objectives set up there and you'll want to hold back with either units with high firepower. So that's a good one to discard. Domination is also frequently discarded um, simply because it's quite difficult to score. It is worth a lot of points if you can get it going, but most people will not have the resources in their army to grab all such objectives, especially as the game goes on. Um, if you draw this card later, it can be much more difficult to achieve it. It can sometimes be easier to achieve earlier on, but again, if your opponent has a lot of units swarming the army, then that's difficult. Prior Orders Received is frequently discarded, however, it is one of the cards that I like to hold on to. So this means that your Warlord has to score it, and he scores a bonus 3 points, which... And a Maelstrom game can be a huge lead. Generally, my Warlord will have a good level of mobility, either with a bike or a jump pack, or able to deploy from reserve. Um, so, I actually like to hold on to this, because as I say, with two-thirds of the deck being for holding an objective, you could get lucky and draw a secure objective card, which can generally be pretty straightforward to do with your Warlord, and get four points just for holding an objective for a turn. Obviously, Master of the Warp and Witch Hunter will depend on your army composition and your opponent's army composition, so you may want to discard them. Psychological Warfare is generally a good one as well to discard, depending on your opponent's army. Most Marines and most Marine armies and competitive armies will have ways to mitigate morale, meaning that they either have uh, small enough squad sizes or some sort of immunity to morale, where the odds of them failing a test are low. Now, some armies are quite susceptible to morale, such as um, Gene Stealer Cults or Astra Militarum, so at times you may want to hold on to this, and again, Use your firepower wisely, maybe rather than destroying an enemy unit, try and whittle down two, three or four guard squads so that your opponent has more chances of failing a morale test and scoring you the points. Kingslayer is one that I'll frequently discard simply because most competitive armies, the warlord is very difficult to either target or kill. This may vary depending on your army. If you have a lot of snipers in your army who can target characters out of line of sight, then you might be able to get Kingslayer, but I frequently find it very difficult to score, so I discard it. And the final one would be a Scour of the Skies, again, based on your opponent's army and what they field, this may be more difficult if they don't have any units with fly, or if the only units they have with fly are flyers that have a minus one to hit, or can potentially get more minuses to hit. So I hope you found some of that information useful. Um, what I would recommend in a Maelstrom game is try and score as many points early in the first turn, or as early as possible. For example, if you're doing the mission, where you draw six cards on turn one, five cards on turn two, etc. Try and score as many as possible. There's a good psychological boost to getting a big lead on your opponent going into turn one, forcing them to have to either scramble to try and match your score, or hoping that they'll go for the tabling and you can keep some units safe. There generally aren't any bonus points for having more units alive at the end of a game. So don't be afraid to sacrifice units to score more points early on, either putting them into the enemy deployment zone or going after objectives that are near your opponent. Yes, the unit may be destroyed quite easily, but if you're scoring points while your opponent is not, then you're going to win the game. 
there's, as I say, there's a nice psychological bonus to going up really far ahead on turn one. If you can get first blood and score three cards and go four points up or more on your first turn, then your opponent's going to be scrambling to close that gap unless they get a really good round of cards as well. So hopefully you found some of that interesting and can apply some of the tactics to your game. As I say, check out the blogs in Andrews Wargaming and the video bat reports and you'll hopefully pick up some tips on playing Maelstrom missions as well by looking at the sort of tactics used by both players. If there are any other aspects of the game you would like to see on a Tactical Insights video, then please leave a comment below and I'll hopefully be able to do a video of them on the future. So please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. You can also check us out on Facebook at St Andrews Wargaming and follow there for more battle reports and hobby updates.